Hello. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? I can see the audio thing working, so hopefully it's all good. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the White Castle, where we're going to play... Not unwinnable. Unwinnable's a bit harsh, but what I understand to be, and in my experience so far, it's an incredibly difficult solo mode. Well, easy to handle. That's the solo tests tend to be really, really easy. But winning it, we'll, we'll see if that's possible. Hey, maybe, wouldn't it be amazing if the first time it happened was on stream? I think I got quite unusually high scores last time. I wonder if something went wrong. Am I all coming through okay? Hey, everyone. See in the chat? See and hear me? Brilliant. Thank you. Right. So let's get to it then. So in the White Castle, we are going to be drafting these dice to take actions with. And we basically want to be prestigious, fancy families. We want the daimyo to be pleased and stuff with us. And so we want to try and get all of these people that are bunched up on our player boards out onto the main board. The main ways we're going to get points in the game at the end. There's a little bit for leftover resources. There's some points if you can get really far along this passage of time track, but the main thing is points for people being in places. There's points on these garden cars to get gardeners out. There's points in the various spaces in the castle if we can get courtiers, courtiers? up that high and there are spaces in the training camps if we can get soldiers in there but the points that they score is based on it's a multiplier of how many people you've got out in the castle so they're the only ones that are kind of linked in that way and yeah we've got resources to try and do it with we've got some money i've got five money to start out with and a daimyo seal that was randomly given to me by a card at the start you don't actually get to choose in solo in multiplayer you would choose from a display of them all paired up you just get given them in solo which is a little bit strange but yeah, i think we're good to go and i'm playing on easy which means that the bot doesn't start with any points but trust me you'll see in a bit they don't need any points to start off with, and uh, it means that I go first and they don't get any movement on this track. That's the harder difficulty. They start off with some points, they go first, and they go up in this influence track. But there seems to be some debate whether them going first might actually be easier on you. We'll see when we get to their turn, though. My turn, at least, we'll explain first all the normal ways you do stuff. Oh, thanks, James. Uh, there's no Marty Cam today. He's still... Like in previous years, as it gets cold, he's back up here. He doesn't seem to want to be on that chair for some reason. So no Marty Cam, sadly. I'm sure, though, at some point he'll come and see what the fuss is about and walk all over the table. He still tends to do that. And yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, then you can do it on Patreon. You can do it on Ko-fi. It's how I'm able to do any of this stuff. So yeah, I really appreciate uh, any support that you could give. And uh, there's links to him in the chat. James has activated the chat bot. So let's get to it then. We need to take a die from one of these bridges. You can just play with the stuff on the board, but the game does come with, I can't remember what number that was. The game does come with these like little 3D punch board uh, dice to put together. I think it was a three. I think it was 336 on there actually. So yeah, you need to take a die from these bridges. There are six available dice. Based on the player count, there's gonna be more dice on these bridges, but you can either take the lowest numbered die or the highest numbered die. If you take the lowest numbered die, you get a lantern bonus. And that is basically all of the stuff you can see at the bottom of your player board. At the start of the game, I haven't really got cards down here, I would get a Mother of Pearl, which is one of the resources of the game. You've got food, is it iron? I think it's iron rather than tools. And uh, Mother of Pearl. And these will be spent on the various actions in the game. So if I was to take the lowered numbered die, I would get a lantern bonus, but why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, all of the worker placement spots on the board, all the dice placement spots on the board, uh, have got dice values on them. And so if I draft a one over here and pop it in a four space, you have to pay money to meet the, the deficit. I'd have to pay three coins to go there with that die. There are some spaces with lower numbers on there. But if you get a higher die, so especially early on when your lantern bonus isn't fantastic, it's tempting to go for the higher value die because you get money based on the difference if you put a higher number die than what you needed for the slot. So I would get three money for placing this six on a three. And the money is very useful for later when we have to take the lower value dice and you've got to make up the money. You need it for some stuff as well, for paying for special gardener actions, for getting your courtiers out in the castle. So what would we like to do first? I think 
Now, the low white die being a three here is pretty nice. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take an action in the castle. This is my turn first. So you will choose one of the available six dice. Then you pop it on a space, and if the die that you've taken is the same value as the action, you don't pay or get any money. So that's all fine. The die from the middle now slides to replace that one. So we've got a new lowest die. I get a lantern bonus for taking that low die, which is just one mother of pearl. It's not going to give us a lot right now, but it could be useful when we do the castle in a bit. If we come and have a look over at the castle, hey, that worked. These are randomly put out at the start of the game to define what the dice do in the castle. And there's these cards that are random as well. So putting a white die here will actually get you two different actions and you can do them in any order you like. So I want to do this one first because it just gets me things. So down here, this will get me an iron and a lantern bonus, which isn't great to start with. But we're, build we're going to build that up. It's going to be great. So I get a mother of pearl again and I get an iron. And then going back in, we can spend a seal. We did start off with one on our starting card, so I'm gonna uh, to do a warrior action. Now the the actions like this, you can see them all at the. Well, you can't actually see that one. You can see them all at the bottom down here. The gardener action, courtier action, and uh, warrior action. These get our people out onto the board. So I've paid to do the camp action. We have got three rows of five special meeples basically here's a warrior when you do a camp action then you get to put them out into one of the camps they have got an iron cost and they've got a bonus associated with them now there's spots on the board that are highlighted in a particular color that show you which way round the bonus tiles go and there's loads of other bonus tiles that we don't see in the game there's loads of other garden cards that aren't in this game yet there's loads more of the, the daimyo bonus cards yeah there's there's loads of variety as well as, I think there's only only like 10, maybe 9 of these castle cards, and you do claim them throughout the game, uh, because we remove a lot for two players, basically. Uh, but yeah, we're going out in one of these camps, so you decide which bonuses do you want, but also what can you afford. I have got three iron, so I could go in here and have some spare to be able to do some more camp actions. I would get three Mother of Pearl, which is useful for your courtiers. You can get them into better spots in the castle faster. So that's tempting. But up here, if we were to pay all of our three iron, then I could take any action in the castle with this coral colored die on it. If we had a look at that, I could do another camp action. Downside of that is I would be spending all of my iron to do that and I wouldn't be able to do another camp action. So those are out the window at the moment. So there are other actions that can be in there. It's just those are the two cards we happen to put out at the start. I could get a seal. Tempting because I haven't got any now, and get any of the any one of the main resources. Food, iron, or pearl. Get an iron and a food. And that's it. Those are the coral actions that have come out in our game. So what do I want to do? Do I spend all of my iron and get that? Or just get a load of pearl and potentially go higher in the castle earlier? I am going to go for the... I'm going to spend all the iron, just get one out for now. And I have uncovered something on my player board now. So these are also actions that you can do later. I could take this action with a white die, and I will now get two pearl instead of just one. And later on, you can get more and more stuff. Get a seal from this, a lantern, so I've got money on them as well. And you get to do the action that corresponds with the line on here. At the start of the game, that's always going to be the camp action. It's just what I've randomly drawn at the start. Could be any of the three. But later on, as we move our courtiers up, we get to take these actions from the board and suddenly the row corresponds to a different, hopefully better for you, action. So we've made that a bit more powerful now, taking a warrior off. And we get to take any coral based action i think it's going to be since we haven't got one now get a seal back and get a resource i think one food's not going to do as much good we need at least two food to put a gardener out which i would like to do and we can get two food from doing the well action down here well i have already got three i'm going to get iron because that means we could do a camp one a camp action now 
should it come up again, we can afford to go in the lowest camp. So that's summer I'm thinking about. So that's all of my turn now, I think. I think I've remembered all of the bits. Hey, Lance. Yeah, I've seen people say that because the the bot... So the we'll see how the bot works now. This is This is why people are potentially saying the bot could be easier on medium because the bot goes first and if the bot goes first there is no chance of its first turn getting a double action the solo's a bit weird I, i've only played it a few times now but um yeah it's uh it's a bit wonky i did do i was pretty close to winning last time though that made it seem a lot more achievable sometimes the bot has just stomped me and it's been very disheartening so we reveal a card, then we look at the top card of the deck here, and it's going to tell us a die that the bot wants to grab. Here's some of the weirdness. If it can take that die, fine. It takes it, put it in, puts it in this spot, and then it's going to do two things. If it ever can't do something, it gets points equal to the round that we're in. And then it tries to do the next thing. So if that die isn't there, we draw a new card and reveal these cards in a line until it can do an action and it will do all of the actions on the last two cards that it drew so as soon as it can't get a die from the bridge it does double the actions and that often leads to it even if it doesn't happen very much it leads to it just getting a ton of stuff out that it feels like you can't possibly compete with we'll see so it takes the the middle die from the coral bridge and it's going to put it in this spot because there's a picture of it now in a game with three or four players i believe there's some stacking of action spaces and does it change a little bit as well that so you're stacking based on the new number that a player's put down rather than the one that was printed on there it seems like that would be a really cool thing for a high player count in two players or solo which is simulating two players there is no dice stacking at all so that's not even a factor these spaces you just can't go in now there's a die there so they're putting it in that space. And then, looking over here, this this icon means he's going to put one of his gardeners out. There are two cards here, because there are two types of garden card. He's going to put it in any of the garden cards with the lowest points value. So if we have we got a nice angle of the garden cards? Oh, pretty much. I'm in the way a bit. But uh, there's two over here that are worth... Oh, what about in a tie? Do I decide in a tie? There's two that are the same points here. Usually there's a clear one. There's more than one. You choose which one. So, these gardener bonuses. You get a bonus when you place a gardener on there. And if there are dice left at the end of the round, because there's going to be three dice left at the end of every round, if there's dice left on that bridge and you've got a gardener there, you get the bonus again at the end of rounds one and two. So, potentially, up to three times you'll get this bonus. This one is do any light-coloured action on the cards that are out this one is get two seals i quite want that one i quite want that one as well but i haven't even got any food at the moment i'm gonna have him put it there so he doesn't get the thing right now he just puts a gardener out he's gonna get points at the end of the game for it and he's gonna get plenty of points as we go along and he doesn't need resources doesn't he doesn't spend money but he wants money so something i'm nearly forgetting to do for him he has just placed a five on a three space he needs to get two coins he's going to turn these into points at the end of each round so that's it for him. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's that. Like, it is really cool playing. It's it's a very cool game. I've only played it solo. Like, it's a really nice system, very tight, very quick to play as well, especially solo. It's like half an hour or something like that. Still making, like, good decisions. But it seems arbitrary, your chances of winning. But I, I feel like the scores have been vastly different, not just from getting more used to the game and getting better at it necessarily, but just some actions like the the pairing of things, how powerful a die is at something, and whether that's blocked off, it can make such a massive difference to the score in general that I don't know if you are like trying to beat your own score. I don't know if it matters that you scored higher than last time because the setup being so different, it's great for the puzzle, but I don't know if it's better if you're like competing in the same way as um, like a more standard beat your own score thing. Like if you're playing something like, if you're playing something old school, if you're playing 
at the gates of Loyang, the the variables are pretty much the same like for the score that you're in you're seeing different cards and all of that but yeah you you're competing against stuff aren't you and i'm sure there's stuff in those games as well that's like there's factors that are making a difference but it, it seems yeah the it it seems like the that are things that are out and whether the bot is getting all of these double actions are playing a huge part in it but we'll see won't we yeah. Okay, because you, you've only got nine turns the entire game. That's it. You've got three turns each round. There are three rounds. So I would like to get a gardener out. I've got no food, though. I maybe should have chosen food there, but you need two food to get stuff from this. So that's blocked off now. We could get a red die, come over here, get another seal and a resource, and an iron and a resource, build up stuff for the future... Yeah, I'm not really convincing myself that I really want to do that because we could just take a coral die and go in the camp again here. We've got an iron now. That would get us three pearls. We want those to go up high in the castle. That might be something that we just want to do instead. We could take a white. If we're just doing one action, we could spend our seal and go into the castle and try and build a few things up. You can always come down here as well. So these are five value spaces. Here you could choose Gardener or Courtier. And here you could choose Courtier or Warrior. So they're available for now as well. And you can always come down here to the well. Any value of die can go down here. Unlimited numbers of dice can come down here as well. It's never blocked off. You get a seal. And in our particular case, two food. Like this is random as well. This is the other side of these dice tiles. See, like... Could have been another whitened coral up there. And some other resources could have been available. So building up resources, I would like to get a gardener out. That does seem like a decent way of, of getting a gardener out. Better than coming to the well, for sure. But then you'd have to hope that was available to actually get the gardener out. Because like just having an income of these seals would be nice to do all of these main actions that cost seals and that you double off, up on quite nicely. Give it a go. Which will potentially end up with too many of them seals. You can spend the seals as well. Two seals can be any resource and one seal can be a coin. also a space he can't go to but maybe we can get these easily enough anyway i'm going to take the high numbered red and i'm just going to do another warrior in camp yeah so i've only got one iron I'm going to put it in this camp, and that gets me three pearls. So when we do do the castle, I could get some good movement on here. Hey, Joel, how's it going? We are going to Gregcon. We're going late tomorrow, after I just finished work. So probably not really going to get any gaming done on the Friday. But Saturday and Sunday, we'll be playing some stuff. I think first thing Saturday morning, we are in a big, you know, like one of the epic Arkham horror card game scenarios where you can... I have a ton of play there's tons of tables playing it. And then we have got a game of uh, someone mentioned in the comments that they were going to Gridcon of the Occam Horror Second Edition video. So we're playing that, which I'm really excited about. So I've been not been doing that enough lately. Okay, so he's gonna put his three here. It doesn't matter that he's playing a lower number. It's uh he just gets to place it there. He doesn't have to pay any money. So he puts that there. And then it's the other gardening thing. It only considers this side. Oh no, it's this side of the cards. So he's putting another gardener out on the lowest value thing. So my seal's gardener card is gone. And then, did I do both of his icons last time? I didn't, did I? Too busy rambling away. He should have last time got a movement on the passage of time track, as indicated by this heron. So this is going to consider turn order for the future rounds. You can get points if you can get really far up it, but you do have to pay seals. Another reason I wanted seal income. Uh, and he gets two points. 
you're going to see a lot of him get into a load of points. So you've got another garden route, and this means he's moving a courtier up in the castle. His lowest one goes one level up. Now, he hasn't put one in the castle yet, so he can't do that. Whenever he can't do something, he gets points equal to the round we're in, which is round one. So he's only three points in the lead for now. So that's two turns each. And what do we want to do now? So I could, now I've got all of these warriors out, I could put this white six on here, get three more pearls, but you can only have seven or something. That would be silly. And we'd get a warrior action, which I can't do because we're full up now. And the courtier action is available, isn't it? If we put something over here, I'm going to take a low numbered die. I'm going to take this four here. So I'm going to have to pay one to go here. I should have gotten one from that, shouldn't I? So there we go. There's my one that I'm paying. And I'm going to do the courtier action. So then we can see that too. So down here, it reminds us you need to pay two. And you can do either or of this, but I'm going to do both of them. You pay two coins to put one of your courtiers out. And the leftmost one, and we're revealing more stuff for when we do these actions in the future. They go to the castle gate. And then you can spend two pearls to move one of your courtiers up one level in the castle. Or you could spend five pearls to move them up two levels in the castle. The higher level they're on, the more points they're worth at the end. I think... Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move up two levels. I've got six pearls, so I'm gonna spend five of them. We're gonna move from here. We're gonna go up here, up here. It's a bit of a pyramid thing. You've got to move up. This zooms in here. So stop in there. I take this card, and another one's gonna take its place from the deck. This that was in my domain spot on my player board goes away now, but it goes down here to my lantern bonus. So now when I do a lantern bonus, not only do I get a pearl, I get to move on that passage of time track, which is turn order and other stuff. Then, based on the card you just took, you get to do one of the pale actions on it. Now, I've taken the higher up one. There's only one pale action on it, but it's one that I want. Move up two on this track. It will be nice to stay first player, especially for not just for going first, but he gets a better exchange rate on his turns if uh, he's first player. So finally, I was hoping he'd take a black die because if there are no dice left on the bridge, he doesn't get a gardener bonus, which for him is points rather than anything that was on the card itself. So he's going to try and take the lowest value coral, which he can. He's going to put it on this space. Whenever he can't place it where it's meant to because the space is... Uh, already occupied. He puts it in the well and then gets money equal to the difference. He's actually took a one, so that gets him nothing. And then the card tells us he's going to be placing a warrior out in this camp, so the one iron camp, and then he's going to be moving someone up two spaces in the castle. So he's going in there, and then he's got no one in the castle still, so he gets one point from that, because it's equal to the round that we're in. So we've both taken three actions each now, you know, because there's only three dice left on the bridges. So then we determine turn order. Whoever's furthest ahead on this passage of time track is the first player. If there's a tie, whoever's on top. So whoever got their second. Uh, I stay first player then. I got in the lead because of that. So then he gets to spend money. It's been a bit unlucky getting money. Uh, he gets to spend money to buy points. Uh, if he's in the lead, three money buys him a point. It's points equal to the round that we're in as well. If he's second like now, it's five coins for, in round one, one point. So he can't do that. He's only got two money, and he's second, so it would cost him five money for each point. So he's not spending anything there. Then it's gardeners. So if I had any out on bridges that had dice left, I would get their bonus. I didn't put a gardener out. He did, though, and both these bridges have got dice left on them. He gets points equal to the round that we're in. So he gets two more points from that. You can see, you can't really see from bird's eye. We've got these herons for the turn order. We've got this amazing marker for the, the round counter, which is going to move forward now. That's the gardener's. He's going to shuffle his solo deck up. We're going to roll the dice, and then we're ready for another round. And that is a third of the game done. And I've pretty much explained all of the actions that it's possible, so 
I think if decisions come to me, it's going to be quite quick. Okay, let's find all of these dice and get them rolled. And they go on the bridges in you know, ascending order. Also, we've got some very nice black dice. 566, six. so very easy to take the low one and the lantern bonus. Oh, and for white as well. Okay, then. So, still got no iron. So, warrior action is a bit more restricted to me. I could, you know, white six down here, three pearls and two along this track would be quite nice. Let's see. Courtier is an action on this new card now. Just tempted. I have got a seal, so a black five here. Get me two pearls, and I could pay to put a gardener out. I don't have any food, so that's a bit of a shame. White over here. I could get the iron first, get another one out, get a lantern. Oh, I quite like that. You've only got so many warriors, so it'd be nice to get a load of iron first to put them in the, the better spots. But I think that would be quite nice. Yeah, I'm going to take this white and pop it here. So I get the lantern bonus, which for me is a pearl, and move along the passage of time track. Then I put a four on a three, so I get a coin. I'm going to get an iron and my lantern bonus, which is a pearl, and move along this track. It does cost seals to move between these gaps, mocking the changing of the seasons. So that's going to be a problem. I don't know how I'm going to get those seals. Find out, won't we? And then I can pay a seal to put another warrior out, but it has to be in the bottom down here. Paying my only iron, but getting three pearls. So if we did the castle again, we could jump someone straight up to the twos. So that'd be alright, wouldn't it? Let's have a look at the bot then. No double actions yet. They are going to try and take, hopefully it's not the middle white, because that's not there anymore. It is the lowest coral. So they can take that, and they're going to pop it on this space. They want the lowest number garden, the, the lowest point-valued garden space out of any of them. So they could either go there or there. This is pay four coins to activate any of your like, domain bonuses. This is do the well action, which is get a seal and two food. I think I like that one more, just because that doesn't depend on me having a load of money. Well, maybe I'll have. And then one along this track and two points. There's eight in the lead now. Then what? So I've not got it. I've got loads of pearls, so we want to get in this castle. What would let me do that? Well, just putting a, a coral die up here would be a start, and then you wouldn't have to pay anything. You could put any die down here, which means we could take the low one again. He's got two gardeners down here, so maybe we want this to run out of stuff. Yeah. So I can get me a lantern bonus, which is a pearl, and another one up here. I need a seal. So now... I want to do the courtier action, so it's two money to put a new courtier out. I'm putting a 5 on a 5, so I don't get any money from that. And then I can either pay 5 pearls to, again, leap right up, and this goes down into my lantern bonus. I think on the back of these is always points. Is the back always money on these? I think it is. That's why I kind of want these ones, just because when they come back off, they'll add money to the lantern stuff. It will be nice having points on there as well. Or we could just move someone up one step and go up to the top here. We get the lantern bonus and one of these bonuses on the card, which is either a well action. That's a seal and two food. Two points, two seals. Seals is quite appealing. If we took this, we'd get two points and a well action though, because you take the action that's on the card, or we could jump up here and have three just things, three resources, which could be food, and then you could do a gardening action with. 
that gets me a seal though. We're going to pay five pearl to jump up here again. Have this. So you go down and I can take the pale action on the card, which is two points. I'm on the board. And a well action is a seal and two food in our particular game. Right. Because then, if we've got lanterns and stuff, we've now got a seal to, to go over this, is my main concern. Right. Bot is going to try and take the middle black die, which they can. And they're going to be popping it... Where's that picture? Here. So they've placed a six on a four, getting them two money. They're going to be putting a warrior in camp five. And then they're moving up two on this and getting a point. Oh yeah, the six white domain is pretty good, isn't it? For That's getting me a load of pearls again, and a seal, and I could do this again. So that would stop him from getting four points, because his gardeners wouldn't activate. He still might take that die. Might not. If I took this, I'd get my lantern bonus, which is now a pearl moving along this track and a point. Try and keep in the lead and be going first. The six action gets me three food and another courtier action. Oh, I'm tempted by that. I wouldn't have the money to put another courtier out there because I would have to pay one to make up this deficit. I've only got two right now. I think I've got the seal, so I could just take a black die and get a garden. Oh, I need three food, don't I, for the gardener? I remember that now. Get more pearls, so that's no good. This is just getting some stuff. Here, I haven't got the iron to put a warrior out. We could just work on getting stuff. Yeah, the six white is nice for having a load of pearls to be able to jump right up again. Because these are worth six points each now that are up here. And anyone in these camps is worth a point for everyone you've got in the castle. Not on the gate, just in the actual castle spaces. Anyone in this camp is worth two points for everyone you've got in the actual castle. So they work together quite nicely. I mean, the well action will be nice. I just can't really get it, can I? Now, because I didn't go for this. If I'd gone for this one, I could. Still use the two food spots. Which one? So I could just go there and end up with a load of stuff for next time. If I did something with the black five, I'd be getting the temple bonus as well and keep going along this track. I think the reds are really appealing. That's tempting as well because it stops them getting their bonus on the bridge from the double gardener they've got. They get points equal to the round that we're in for each one. So that is four points we're stopping them off, having. Spots where they... Oh! Oh, I've just been dismissing those garden spots when they've been taken. Oh, but actually, now I remember in the rule book they're all stood up, aren't they? So we could go on. We could just have a garden space and pay the two food then to get like seal income or choose like a pale place. Hmm. Maybe we should do that then. So what gets us a garden? Oh yeah, doing the black die. So that that works out well, doesn't it? We wouldn't have a seal. Hmm. The downside is we'd be getting a passage of time to move along here which costs a seal and then we wouldn't have the seal to spend on there. Or we don't get the movement of that, which I do kind of want. 
But then it's sacrificing that, and then we could get two seal, two seals now, and two more at the end of the round, and that should see us for a bit more movement, shouldn't it? Or you could just have this pale action that could be a load of useful things. Could be getting a seal there as well. A seal and a resource. It's going to be worth a few points as well. What was the alternative? What else was I considering? I don't think there was any... Oh, the thing over here. Just get a load of pearls and a seal and two points in the well from doing this and stop them getting four points which isn't massive it's something yeah something about the gardeners isn't exciting me for some reason i'm going to go for the resources three pearls and a seal from doing this i know it's not four seals and two points which I'm not really considering, not really factoring the points into this because that's barely anything. And a seal and two food. So if we did get a garden next time, we'd only get to use it as we placed it. But we've got more of a choice. Pay three coins to put another gardener. That's not so good for us. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Right. He's going to try and take the rightmost black die, which he can. So no double turns yet. Been. All right on that. Can't place it there, so he puts it over here, which gets him five coins for putting a six on a one. And then he is going to pop a courtier out in the gate. Ugh. It's the problem, though. Yeah, we didn't get a lantern bonus. Moves up on that, which for some reason means he's in the lead now. And then he gets three money. Yeah, he's got loads of money, and the exchange rate's going to be great for him for getting points now. Okay, so first of all, turn order. He is now in the lead. He becomes first, and now that he's first, it only costs him three money per two points. It's points equal to the round that we're in. He's got 12, so that's going to get him four sets of two points, which is eight points. There we go. The gap widens, and then... Gardeners. So there's no dice on this bridge, no points. Over here, there's dice, so he gets points equal to the round that we're in. Two points. Then, I don't think there's anything else to do. So we set up for the next round. Move to round three, so there's no gardeners at the end of round three. Get them if you placed. But we just skip, we do turn order, and then we go to the scoring. Let's see what we've got here. Really high numbers again. Five, five, six. Four, four, five. And one, five, six. And I'm not first, so we need to shuffle these. Well, if we're in the lead by the end of the game, on the, the track, that would be nice. Which I already know I'm not doing as well as I did last time. A lot further along that track, had a lot more people out, just in general. I think I only had one gardener out as well. But, you know, the setup and stuff's different, in it? You can't really gauge it like that. So first up, he's going to take the middlemost white die, and he's going to pop it there. Probably wasn't going to go there. Then he takes a gardener and puts it in the lowest value on this side, which is there, and gets five coins. So that's at least worth three points to him now, even if he ends up in second place. Then, it's me, isn't it? Oh, no. So I've got loads of pearls. Probably want some more people out in the castle. Got no iron. So getting people out in the castle with a white die there, you're only getting one. Action out of potential two. But we'd then get to get some more stuff going as well. Get people up the top. I have got two money. 
yeah, I'm going to take the lower white die, because I always, I also want this bridge to be empty as well, ideally. I take the lower die, so I get a lantern bonus, which is a pearl, and move along the passage of time. Got to spend a seal to do that. You don't have to spend seals. And a point. Is that summer? I have to look at my camera, see if that's going forward. Then, we can pay a seal to put a courtier out. Do I want to pay two money to put another person out, or am I just going to move these up? I want to put a new person out. And I want to pay five again. I've been able to do this every time. Now, it is tempting getting three things. I could get another pearl. I could get... I could just get all lines so I can put some more warriors out. I'm going to go up here, though, because I want this. So you go out there, and this gets me two money. So the two money I paid back. And I can have another pearl. Now we've got two again for if I want to do it somewhere else. Another movement on this track. Then two more points. I would say, based on my games, Lance, it is uh, highly unlikely that I'm going to win. I think the bot's not as far forward as they usually are, but I don't feel like I've got enough presence out on the board at this stage of the game. Have I done everything for my turn? Yeah, I only got one thing, didn't I? I'm not chaining as many things. Like, getting things in the big camp action and getting bonus actions out of it is quite nice. Right, let's see. Can it take the lowest red? Yes, it can. It's going to put it out here, so no money. Then it's going to put its gardener in the lowest value of any of the garden cards. And then it's going to go one on this track and get two points. Okay. So now... I don't have any iron. Otherwise, that'd be very tempting. Three pearls and a seal and a camp action. And food up at the top. That's the downside. The gardeners that I'm not bothered about are the things that would get me iron on this bonus. There is still this out here. I've got a seal. Iron and a lantern. Spend a seal to put someone else at a camp. Get me a load of pearls. Could just grab a die. Oh, you need to slide over. Could just grab a die to put someone else out at the castle. We need a new card out there. That's true, it hasn't managed to get anyone in the castle yet, so its warriors are worth no points, and it's got no points from the castle, which is uh, unusual for it at this stage, but we'll, uh, we'll see. That's currently the only way I can put a courtier out. And if I paid one, I could do it with the low die as well, up here. Take that on my last turn for something. I wouldn't have the two to put a new courtier out, so it would just be moving an existing one up, is the downside. If I was to take the low value die. Because I've got to bump it up here. Because if I just took a higher value die, that's definitely knocking him out of contention of having these gardeners active. Do I need a white die for something? If I want another warrior out, it would be nice to have one there. He might take it. I could just take the high value. Like, well, six, if I'm not getting my lantern bonus. Take the six to go there, so I get an extra money. And then I can afford to get a courtier out. And I could use that courtier to get some iron, maybe. Like... And then for the last thing, we could go along the bottom here and... But what if you got the pearls first? What if you did this first and got the pearls and then made your last, because that space might not be available, is why. 
and then you can't go in the castle at all if that space isn't available. And because I and because I haven't got the iron right now. Okay, I remember why I can't do it that way around. So go in there. That would get me a money. Which means we can pay to get someone new in the castle. So as long as they end up in the castle, if they're the person we move up now... Let's pay two for that. And I'm leaning towards... Moving them up here and getting this. So I can get an iron and a lantern action right now, which is a load of things. It just it changes which die is going to do my camp thing, doesn't it? Maybe we don't put a new one out. Don't put a new one out. Pay a money instead. Take this low four, which activates the lantern. Get a pearl. Move along this. Get two points. And just move one of these up instead. That only costs two pearls. And I can have my lantern action, which is a pearl. Move along this. Get two points. And I can either have the well action... So a seal and two food. I could get nine points from going in one of these places. I haven't got a lot of money to be activating any on this side. But it could get me like another well action. Another one of these actions. I'm probably not going to get a garden rat. Two seals. Great if I'm going to use them. But if I'm not, they just translate to like... They add up with your money and every five is worth a point. Or I just get two money. Two points, I mean. I'm leaning towards two points because I don't think I can spend those seals. Well, if I go across there is the only thing. What am I doing next time? I'm just going to be putting someone in here, I think. Which isn't actually worth a load of points, is it? I'm going to get seals hoping that we can cross over here. Like if, we're getting, if we get the camp this way... It's only going to translate to one lantern thing. Get the points. And then be mad next time when you haven't got the seals. Right, he's going to try and take the left... Here we go. The leftmost white die. It's his last thing. But here's his double turn. No, it's not there. Can he take... He's putting a load... Oh, he's putting a load of warriors out, though. Not putting anyone in the castle. He can take the highest red. So this might actually work out okay. He can't place the die there, so he has to place it there. And he gets four coins. This might be the worst I've seen the, the bot play. So then it's actions. It's putting a warrior out in the top camp. Then it's moving two along this track and getting a point. Then it's putting a warrior out in the three camp. They are all worth zero points. Oh, no. They're, gonna, they're all going to be worth one point each. Well, two, four, five, six. And this is going to be worth three points. I can decide where he goes, basically which card gets discarded. I'm going to go there, so I don't want that one discarded. Or maybe we should have him discard this one, because I could potentially go there with a black die, but it's a, it's a white die I want to get out with. So that just gets discarded. So, yeah, unfortunately he has ended up going in the, the castle. Only one thing, though. That could be way more points, and usually is way more points. Speaking of way more points, he's getting loads of points from this. Okay. So I think we're going to deny him a bit. Oh, there's no Gardener bonus at the end anyway, is there? So like, trying to deny him isn't, like, vital. But... See here, getting... Like, it can be worth points having these resources left at the end. Three points and a seal and then doing the camp. It's not that worth it. The Lantern would be better, I think. 
I've only got one money. If I had the money to pay to make that one a three and get the lantern bonus from that, and then again from there, you wouldn't have the seals to go across, so it doesn't matter. Okay, fair enough. So, just take that then, because then you can do both things, and you need to do both things. We get an iron and a lantern bonus, which is a pearl, now worth a point, and move along here and get two points. And then we're paying a seal to put a warrior out. I've only got one iron, so it's got to go out in the lowest value one. But each warrior is worth three points. So I've got three in the castle. Wonder. It's not ahead by... It's usually ahead by so much. Uh, Points-wise. And he's already had his points, hasn't he? Because he's in the lead. He's already had his turns. Three dice left. There we go. If this was Gardener's situation, that would actually be great. It'd be denied three Gardeners. But we don't have that anymore. So I'm in the lead on the Passage of Time track. So that's that worked out. Then, because he's second, he can pay five coins for each three points. So, he's got nine coins, which is very nice for me. He can get that. That is... Usually, he's got about 40 points at this stage. Like, and especially, like, he seems to be... Like, oh, he keeps missing actions in the third round where he gets three points for everyone. But, yeah, he's usually got... So many people everywhere. <laughs> so I suppose the fact that he only got one double action this time helps. I think that's it for him. He doesn't score the... We add up our money and seals, which is... What are you doing here? I think I decided not to put you out. Which is zero for me. He, but every five seals and money is worth a point. Haven't got any. So then it's just people are worth the points. Oh, and the passage of time, but we're both in that section, so that means nothing. Three points each. Could be six, could be tons if you got all the way towards the end. Uh, then, people in the castle. So up top here, with ten points. Caught up. And then down here, we've got two in the six spots, so another twelve. So on forty. He has got one person down here, which is worth three points. So that's a good jump. Then in the training yards, he gets... Two, four, five, six points for everyone he's got in the castle. That's only one, so that could be a lot worse. I get one, two, three, four points for everyone I've got in the castle. I've got three, so that's 12 points. So I need a 40. Hey, I've never got the 40 first. Is it going to last, though? Because I feel like I can already count that there's more in the gardens than I am in the lead. Okay, then finally, yeah, it's, it's the gardens. So he has got... I forgot a close-up of the gardens. The one I'm in the way of. He has got 5, 8, 11, 16, 23 points from the gardens. So I think it's going to be fairly close. 1, 2, 3. 80, 60 points, which seems very low for him. Fairly low for me, I suppose. But well, eight points in it is pretty decent. Where did I get last? What was the last time? I was 11 points behind last time. So that, that's the closest that I've come, I think. But yeah, he... He got held back a lot in the castle just because it's, it's random where he's going to put things. He never has to pay for any of this stuff, so he doesn't get held up by that. But yeah, just the cards that happen to put people in the castle, he only ever got one of those cards. And... Like, the actions that move people at the castle, they did get him, like, a point each, but that's nothing for him, is it? So there we go. That is the White Castle. Even with all my blathering and explaining and stuff, we're only at an hour, and that's, like, with the starting soon screen and the is-my-microphone-working uh, business. So it's a, it's a very, very quick game. I so say, like, when i am actually been playing it solo, even with learning it, it wasn't very long, but I'd say under half an hour for a solo game of it. There are harder difficulties where he starts further up this track, gets some points at the start, starts off as first player. But as uh, as Lance said earlier on, like this, there seems to be some discussion over whether it's better for him to start first, because if he goes first, then he can't possibly get a double action on the first turn. So that's the downside of you being first. You, he's not going to block a space off. But, uh, yeah, he could just get double turns. Yeah, actually, that if, if he'd drawn a different card and didn't end up doing the move up, which I'm sure there were plenty, then, yeah, he would have been down three, 
five, seven, eight, nine points. He probably would have got some points in some other way, but that's that's pretty close. And yeah, considering how we ended up, yeah, there's, it's it's so tight as well. Like it's it's good that things should always leave you wanting more. But yeah, it feels like I was just getting somewhere and then it stopped, but in kind of a good way as well. I think if it went another round, there's another thing that I've seen um, people wonder or suggest. I think if it went another round, you could get everything done. So there wouldn't be much point in that. I think I've definitely enjoyed it solo. Like the, the actual game itself and the puzzle of it is absolutely fantastic. There have been, even in the, what's this, like the fourth time that I've played or fifth, like just in those limited number of games, there have been some, a couple of just absolute stinkers where he's so far in front and there's so much stuff out on the board that it's just like, what, why am I even, it's, it's just disheartening. Like, I know that like it's, yeah, you're not necessarily competing against something, but because he doesn't have to spend any money to do anything and just kind of pours points out that it's, it's completely random on his part which dice he's going to get rid of. It doesn't really matter to him whether he's deactivating his gardeners or not. And often, it's like, it's not worth you sacrificing a whole turn to do something ineffective because you have only got nine turns to stop him activating his gardeners, but he gets a load of points from it. It's, it's tough to say. And so yeah, there's it's, it's definitely like, the game itself is very fun, but there have been some real frustrating times with uh, the solo mode of it. It's dead quick to handle. Like, it's just take a die and do a thing. I don't get why he should ever really get double turns. Seems like he's doing well. Like, if if he actually, if he'd drawn a card that, like, not even if he'd got a different card, if he had drawn a card that had a die available, and so he would only have gotten one card, like, of actions, then I would have won. And that, to me... Like maybe the, I think that is, there's loads, there's threads and threads on Board King Geek. I haven't gone through like even a fraction of them, but uh, I think that seemed to be the most frequent suggestion that on easy, especially like even if he gets to draw multiple cards, you only do one, you only do the right most one that he drew. So like, yeah, rather than just doubling up on actions, I don't get why he does that. Yeah, that, yeah, didn't they, didn't they say like, are we, we did this ourselves, yeah, and, and won. <laughs> One in seven or something like that, that they said, yeah, was it 15%? Yeah, which is fair enough that, like, it should be a challenge to win the game, but not on easy. And that is a thing as well, like, it's normally a thing of uh, video games. Uh, but, like, if you give me an option in difficulties, usually I'm going to pick normal. And if normal is ridiculously hard or ridiculously easy, then it's not normal, is it? Like, this is easy. I suppose, like, it's not been that much of a gulf this time, but, yeah, it's def it's there's been uh, plays of 30-plus points difference. Just because, like, you end up scoring so similarly, I think, in the end game scoring. Like, aside from anything that we got during the game, I suppose it's because you can get stuff during the game. But in Endgame, what did I get? Like 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 29. And he got 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 6, 9, 14, 21, 26, 29, 32, 35. He's already just winning. Like... He's already just winning in the... He's like six points ahead or something in that. It's like, I know you can score points during the game, but you absolutely cannot rack them up like he can. I suppose... I wonder if that's to make up for the fact that, like, some games he just won't get in the castle. Like, it's only nearly happened this time, and then all of that's negated, and then you might stomp him in points. But yeah, I think um, you shouldn't win easy like on your first couple of plays like but once you once you know the rules of the game and the systems of the game an easy difficulty should just be consistently beatable for you like maybe not every time but it's it's, it's easy the it's yeah it's not slightly tough quite tough and dead tough is it it's not normal 
extreme and nightmare. Maybe that's what uh, the intention is, though. But yeah, there's uh, there's some quirks and frustrations with the solo mode itself. But yeah, I don't think that would be present in the, the multiplayer game. And I feel like, like I'm not going to play it at a high player count. I don't really play things at a high player count. And hey, I'm co-op in big groups. But um, I feel like the dice stacking would be really interesting with high player counts as well, because so it's just a, a spot is blocked in two player or solo as soon as someone's put a die there apart from in the well that's that's it for you but you can you can stack dice can't you yeah so like i think that's really interesting for the dice placement not only there's loads of dice on the bridges at a high player count but you can stack two dice on top of each other so these spots would not be blocked off anymore but suddenly this spot that blocked three that was once three is now five so is that worth it you've got to pay a, you've got to pay even more to be placing stuff up there or the same like if i desperately wanted something and i paid a load to do this action with a one suddenly that's way better for everybody else drafting a different die and making a load of money off my die i think that's uh really interesting for Nice placement. But yeah, there's uh that's not in the, the two player bit. I think like there's definitely thought gone into the, the solo mode because the system is nice and elegant. It's just the I I don't know where some things came from, like the Maybe like like if the designers are satisfied with only winning so few of the times which, I, I don't know, like, it's, like, Shadowrun Crossfire, a very, very different game. I think a very impossibly hard game, though, as well. I think the designers of that won something like 40% of the time, didn't they say? And that is a game that I've played a ton, and I still find ridiculously hard. My win rate would be probably closer to, like, 10% or something. But like, the that's not an easy mode, that's just like a normal mode, and it's a game that's got a reputation for being ridiculously tough. I just feel like, yeah, it's just uh, an easy thing, isn't it? I think that would be something to go with, just don't do the double ups. Because you saw there, that would have been not only a victory, it's not anything to do with that, it would have been, it would have been a victory by a point as well. So that's competition, isn't it? I wonder if it's down to, like, it could just be down to the things you get for setup and the way the dice and stuff are at the start. I hope it's not. Um, I don't really get to play things enough to worry about that. And I'm not getting a designer. I don't know. But, yeah, if, if it is down to the fact that if the bot, if you just ignore double actions for the bot the entire time, no matter what happens with the dice, if that would make them win or lose be close, like relatively nicely close to you. I know it's only like 10 points or something ahead anyway. But like, that's pretty good, isn't it? For someone that's like, I know the game and understand it. I'm still like, surely not aware of its intricacies and cool strategies and stuff. Like that, that will probably be a good level for me. But yeah, hopefully. The playthrough giving you an idea of what the, the game's like itself, whether you'd like to check it out. One massive plus for it as well. You can probably see with like the size of the board and stuff. Like the the game box is tiny. It's packing a load of stuff in here. It's quite cheap as well for a Euro game. I know there's not like a ton of uh, bits to it, but there's a lot of lovely looking bits to it. And uh, as someone who's like not just shelves, floors are too full of games. I really appreciate a, a nice little compact game that's not just like, I love my fillers, but it's nice having a a good, interesting, fairly quick game. Didn't take up a lot of space as well. Yeah, I'd say that. It didn't feel bolted on, but I'd say, yeah, it's, it's a fluid system. It's just too difficult. I think it should be... Uh, Tweaked. Especially for the difficulty. Like, maybe this should be, like, normal or even hard. Like, a 15% win rate. Seems, like, hard, right? I don't know. Because you can always just start him off with more and more if you are, like, just consistently winning and that's the only thing that changes at the higher player count. 
at the high difficulty. He just gets more along this track, so it's less and less likely you're going to get in front of him early on anyway. And starts off with some extra points. Like it's not a huge jump for any of those things, but as, as I said earlier, like people have said that I think as soon as you leave the easy difficulty, he starts out first. But people have argued that that's easier because if he goes first, there is no chance that he's going to get a double action uh, in the first turn of the round anyway. Whereas there's possibility for that if you go first. But anyway, you can see how it plays, can't you? You can see the actual game system itself. It's all lovely in there. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. I have got to get ready for Gridcon when we're going tomorrow. I've got uh, games to pack and stuff, things to put away, things to get ready. Arkham Horror decks to make. Done none of that. Don't even know who I'm going to be. Someone new, I hope. Someone I haven't been before and someone nice. Video wise, there is going to be. What is there going to be? Tomorrow, Final Girl comes up on the main channel. Say rather than early on Patreon like it was last week. There is a video coming up for a great big, not really just an insert, like a storage system for Massive Darkness 2. The entirety of Massive Darkness 2. They'll likely be on Saturday for a company called Fan Fancy But Functional. And I agree with both of those things in the name. And on Sunday, we'll have a brand new series of something. Something returning, but with new and cool things. And there'll be the, the concluding part of that will go up early on Patreon on Sunday. That's all of the stuff that's coming up. Uh, if you like to see some of that stuff early, or mainly just support the channel, even like a pound, a dollar, a month or something, can uh, really help me do all of this stuff. Thank you, everyone, that uh, supports the channel and for just watching and subscribing and stuff in general. Thank you, everybody, and uh, I will see you probably next week for something else. What was coming second? Was it Apiary? Maybe we're doing Apiary next week. I will uh, let you know sooner to it. Hey, it will parallel Jim. I um I haven't got parallel Jim, but I know he's like a print and play thing, so we could do it. But someone is organising like a a printing of them, so I'm I'm going to wait for that to to give a parallel. I don't think I've played any of the parallels. I've got all the ones before now. I think but yeah, we're getting the someone's doing like a a printing of them. That'll be nice. It's going to take us about three. Three and a half hours, something. It's a long way, Gridcon. But uh, hopefully, it would, like I say, that's that's why I say we're probably not going to get anything done on the Friday night. Probably going to be too tired and just fed up from the travel. But yeah, it's just because like Rach can't have days off for anything. So we have to go the night off rather than because it starts like tonight. I think people are doing stuff there, maybe even. So yeah, it's definitely on tomorrow, but we have to go up on Friday night and we'll get a load of stuff played Saturday and Sunday, I think. Yeah, we take something like Fortune and Glory, do some adventuring. I don't know what we're taking. There'll be plenty in the library though. Thank you everyone for being here uh, and uh, I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye everyone. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>